you're giving ever a quick reason. So I just want to make sure that everything is correctly. But not to keep you waiting anymore, just uh, present the short outline of today's meeting. So yeah, we're just going through the introduction. I will just give you a few ideas about the toolbox. And then we swiftly move to discussing three cases today. That's going to be like a basic laminar flow so that you, you just get the impression how the toolbox works, what's behind it. Then I show heat transfer on top of that and some basic turbulence model as well. Then it will be some chance for questions and answers. And when we finish, I'll just ask you to go to a really short query so we can collect some feedback for, from you. OK, so regarding the toolbox itself, uh, like it's meant to be a CFD toolbox that lets you perform simulations within MATLAB. Because as you probably know MATLAB, that's like a really widely spread engineering environment. And like there are over 100 toolboxes available for that. But surprisingly, there was no toolbox that would be suitable for computational fluid dynamics. That's why we, well, that's why we launched this project. And we've created a solver that's based on finite element method. And for now, it doesn't have a graphical user interface because actually like that's not so necessary. It's a set of functions that's used to run simulations. You'll just check it out in a moment if you haven't yet. And it's for fluid flow. And on top, you can do heat transfer and other stuff. So coming to the fields that are covered in here, uh, like microfluidics, biomedical flows, that's all that's related to laminar flows. Heat transfer on top of that. We also do turbulence modeling, diffusion and passive scalar transport, because like it's for transporting species, chemicals, colors. Mathematically, it's similar to heat transfer. So like those two usually come in pairs. Obviously, once you can do turbulence, you can do aerodynamics. And there are also a few fancy features. Because as I will show you, uh, because of the structure of the solver, it's easy to manipulate the mesh itself. So there's a lot of free space for shape optimization. Uh, we also implement, implemented shallow water equations. That's more, scientists are more into that, but it also pre works pretty nice. Porous media flows, Darcy flows, and compressible flows as well. But like today, we will focus on three of those. If you want to uh, check it out later on, there's lots of materials on the website and so on. OK, so let's move to the, to the MATLAB itself. Of course, like if you have any questions during the presentation, just put them on the chat. Jacob, our engineer, our engineer will help, you, will help uh, answering them. So please give me a second one while I'm sharing the screen. Let's go for the full screen area. OK. And let's move to MATLAB. OK, great. So here we are in MATLAB. And just to show how simple that is to start with, you download the solver from our website and install it using install app, it shows up in here on the list of applications that you can work with. And uh, once you launch it, what opens is a menu that's basically a scroll that would let, would let you filter through the problems, either by dimensionality, so you can filter through 2D problems and 3D problems like if they are transient or laminar, and like, you know, all the combinations of the things that you're used to. On one hand, uh, on one hand, you have sort of generic solvers, because as I show in a moment, it makes no sense to write every solver from the scratch. The structure is always the same. And uh, on the other hand, you've got all the tutorials that we've already prepared. There are almost 30 of them available. And there's a button that gets started, so which covers to some extent the things that we do today. So uh, like it's meant to be a self-starter. You can also check it by topics. 
but okay let's just move to applications and the first thing as I told for today it's the very basic laminar case uh, just scrolling through that you can immediately see that those are just routines that manipulate the data so as for every CFD simulation what we do we import the mesh here there's an option that converts the mesh to the second order because actually we work on triangular or tetrahedral meshes which are of the first order but actually from some sophisticated maths it turns out that when you solve for velocity and pressure then velocity nodes have to be of the second order pressure have to be first order so that's why we upgrade that and later on we just specify parameters initialize the solution set some extra stuff like the, the convergence level number of iterations here that's how all the solving takes place so if you're familiar with finite element method you will recognize that actually every time step you have to create the matrix of our system of equations and into this matrix you also modify some data by using specific specific functions for boundary conditions the boundary conditions are self-explanatory but like okay for now just a second of overview that's a single convergence step that's the plotting step in here solving the equations with MATLAB division and then there's post-processing so every solver looks pretty much the same and uh, just the subroutines are different because then there will be subroutines for heat transfer for turbulence models for passive scalar transfer for shallow water equations etc so let's go step by step how it looks there's a really nice function in MATLAB just simply evaluate sex selection f9 so that uh, you do not have to run the whole script and I just read in the mesh and now I upgrade it to the second order and I display that so yeah that's the starter problem in CFD that's the flow past the cylinder so the solid no slip wall is here the inflow is on the left outflow is on the right and on top and bottom you will specify the boundary conditions the mesh is really rough for now it's really coarse simply just to show uh, what's the how the solver works we do not spend much time on just integrating that but it's it, it's it's fair enough okay and uh, once we've got this mesh read in you can also see that the way it's handled it's by it starts in the variables that, that are called p e and t p is two or three dimensional array i mean uh, the array of two by size or three by size and uh, and uh, okay i just got a prompt that we even have a better mesh for visualization better functions for visualization but that's 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 for later anyway like p stores the coordinates of the mesh and e and t store the topology this thing is pretty familiar with uh, it, it's it's pretty standard for creating meshes and it's it's used also in matlab pde partial differential equation toolbox so for now when you look at that okay once again let's see the mesh let's display that okay it's here okay so what we could do even from the console we can see we would do something like that we would extend it twice so p2 is the second coordinate y works like that and you see that it got extended in the y direction and uh, actually that, 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 that that's really helpful sometimes you can do lots of fancy stuff you can do moving geometries later on and so on okay but let's let, let's go back to that but that's one of 
the ideas of having that performed in MATLAB. Let's go back to the original shape. It's here. Okay. We set the kinematic viscosity just to be 0.01. So we've got Reynolds number around 100. Now, the key values, that means the values of pressure and velocity, will be stored under a single array that's called U. We will discuss that later on. Uh, but that's that's a coupled solver, if, if you want to know. Convergence is a vector, is a, is a data set that simply tells uh, like the, the convergence parameters. No, no much uh, details in that. Uh, we initialize it on PT. Uh, 1 and 0 is simply the value for the, for the initial velocity everywhere. And if you want just to learn about other parameters, you can always type help and initialize solution in its solution. And it would prompt you what the options are and so on. So yeah, like there is, there's a full documentation of the toolbox available in here. Okay, so let's let's initialize that as well. Yes, okay, things appeared over there, I hope. NP nodes, NV nodes, okay. And uh, the main iterative loop is the thing that gets performed in here. Okay, so uh, once again, for now, for flexibility reasons, you imply, yeah, I mean, you apply the boundary conditions every time in the iteration step. It can be also speed it up in other ways in the latest release, uh, you will see how it works. But uh, basically, how you denote the mesh and its elements, it's simply by numbers that you created in Gmesh. So for the entity number 10, which is the left inlet, you just have to prescribe inlet boundary condition. And uh, 1 and 0, that's the value of velocity. 12 is the number of. Uh, the cylinder, or just, uh, no, it's free slip. So that's the number of top and bottom wall. And 13 is the cylinder. OK, here it says free slip. But OK, it should be something like slip along x. OK, we just switch for that in a moment. Let's assume it's a wall as well. Here, that's the convergence process. So let's just check it out how the thing converges. OK, we initialize it again. Uh, we evaluate the selection. And you can see a nice plot familiar to everybody doing some CFD or other continuum mechanics problems or any, any kind of numerics. You can see the relative level of re residuals. And uh, they are for velocity and for, pre uh, for both components of velocity here. And they were set to be 10 to minus 6 or 50 iterations, because clearly the convergence is not warranted every time. OK. OK. The things seem that they converged. Nice. OK. So you can already see that the matrix of neighbor Stokes is created. But most importantly, we have the U, that the solution is already created. So uh, we also have to move the pressure from the first order nodes to the second ones. We just copy this data so that it grows. The U just grew. And now we can start visualizing that. So the color maps first. Display solution to D. And obviously, if we move to the second uh, to three dimensions, it's going to be just called display solution. And uh, just create a figure. And uh, t, t are always the coordinates. That, 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 those are the mesh parameters. And now, the, the most important thing. We will visualize x velocity. So there is an additional structure that's called indices. And uh, it's dot and u. Those are simply the indices that are meant to denote the x component of velocity in our grid. So you can see, see that there are just these numbers. Later, we will visualize pressure. So 
simply those are different numbers. So simply that's like a subset of an array, U, that stores everything. So let's have a look how it performs. And yeah, that's how it looks. That's not that smooth, but simply the mesh is really coarse, and also the display is of the first order, while actually the solution is of the second order. So, uh, like in the newest release, that's that's not any longer the case. I'm still working on the older one, but uh, we'll just fix that in a moment. The, the, the most important thing is that we've got the inlet on the left, as you can see, velocity equal to 1. Here it's it's forced to be no slip because like we created the walls, solid walls in here, and there's the dead zone behind the cylinder. So yeah, boundary conditions were applied properly. As you might have noticed, there were no boundary conditions applied at the right outlet. And simply the solver has its default settings, and that simply means that the average pressure was set to zero uh, in this kind of formulation. That's a little bit technical, that's longer story, uh, how this kind of uh, boundary condition is implemented, uh, but you can look it up if you, for example, go to the introductory tutorial, open the PDF file, and uh, that it describes the first problem, and the mathematical formulation uh, goes, that's the kind of a boundary condition that's being solved. And it is mathematically strictly shown that if the uh, edge of the mesh is straight, simply that means that that's the average pressure equal to zero. Anyways, going back to the simulation, uh, let's just have a look at pressure in here. And uh, yeah, that's the thing that we would expect. So you can see at the outlet it's close to zero, the, s the smallest pressure is in here at, at, the, at the top and there's also some dead zone behind it and there's the stagnation point in the front so it looks decent uh, now uh, there are some extra functions for exporting the variables uh, if you use gmesh actually we recommend gmesh for creation of meshes then there are options to export those data fields to GMesh as well to visualize them later on. And there are also functions for getting proper data from the simulations into arrays. So there's a function that's called compute force and it lets you integrate the forces on specific edge. That is the edge number 13. And uh, executing that, we've got two vectors and there are F total and F viscous. So F total is the total force acting on an object and F viscous is the part that comes from viscous forces. That's really useful for aerodynamics later on. You can also compute the moment and uh, you can also compute the boundary fluxes using those uh, functions boundary flux T. So that's the volumetric flow that's in. Let's check it out if it, it's actually equal to the one that flows out. So it's minus 3.8 because it flows into the system. And this is 3.92. OK, so the mesh was really coarse, although the simulation did converge. Uh, like, it's not entirely equal. OK, and uh, there's an uh, l uh, thing later on that's for generating the profiles. So you just extract the nodes. But for now, I just wanted to show you, before we continue with that, how to improve the results of this simulation a little bit. And one of the features of, of our uh, solver is the ability to create the boundary layers. So this piece of code that actually comes from another tutorial performs that. And uh, I simply uncomment that. Let me clear it, or uh, do I have to do this? Yeah, let's clear it for for sake of uh, safety, because some data has been modified later on. But now, if I restart the simulation, I reread the mesh, and now there's a structure layers that's called uh, 
that tells you how many layers of boundary layer will be generated, what's the growth ratio, and what's the height of the first element. And we will, uh, we do not need that twice, we will generate this. So you'll see how it performs. Extrude layers to D, creates the thing. Now upgrade the mesh, and uh, let's evaluate how it looks. It should be somewhere here. Is it here? Uh, sometimes things get a little bit messy. Uh, I should write something like figure one. Maybe now it works. All the way selection. Yep, I got it. Great. So it's in figure one. So now you can see that using this function, I was able to create the boundary layer in here. Again, clearly the mesh is made of triangles, so uh, it looks like that, but it really drastically improves the simulations. So let's, let, let's give it a try, and uh, maybe let's set higher level of convergence, and let's maybe even admit for more steps. So, okay, without going into any further details, we can, okay, let's, let's work with that again. Okay, the convergence process has started. Mesh got slightly larger. Yes, because we used to have like 3,800 nodes and now it's like 400. Uh, uh, 4,400 something. Also, pay attention that for now there are more velocity nodes than the pressure nodes. So that just confirms the issue with the order of our simulation. Okay, still a few steps. Ah, okay, it looks as if it converged slightly faster than in the previous case. But I assume it's because of the quality of the mesh itself. It admits better convergence. And yeah, we are done in 36 steps for such a mesh. And let's scroll downwards to see how the thing looks. Uh, OK, pressure data has already been generated. Yeah, so there are, there's the same number of pressure nodes as NV nodes, so I use that as well. And now we can have a look at the solutions themselves again. Evaluate selection. And uh, yeah, now it looks much more smooth, as you can see that in here. Definitely, like there are no, no no art the artifacts are not that strong in here okay so the things work properly uh, okay so let's just do a few more visualization tricks maybe let's just check the fluxes themselves so uh, volumetric flow rates evaluate selections and 3.9 3.97 okay so there's still difference but it changes Still, the inflow boundary condition, uh, together with this no-slip stuff on the top and bottom, might be problematic a little bit. If you play around with a slip condition or extract, uh, change the velocity profile, that, that, should, that should work better then. Okay, and now let's have a look at the pressure distribution themselves. So, what we do, we extract the node IDs on edges number 12, and we have to get the x coordinates of those nodes. And we can plot the pressure distribution then in this way. So simply speaking, OK, that's maybe not the best, uh, not, mo not the most illustrative problem. But simply speaking, if you know the MATLAB itself, like the way that you handle arrays and so on, you can simply get access to all the data in our solver for visualization purposes. Uh, yet another small remark. We have to uh, remember that this is an incompressible solver, and like there's density is always constant. 
we haven't prescribed that at all. And what we simulate for is actually p over rho, because it doesn't matter if rho is constant. So we p and p over rho are just like diff differ by a ratio of rho. And that's the way the solver is for now formulated. We look for p over rho. OK, so apparently that's uh, the pressure along uh, get indices of nodes lying along these walls. OK, so that's yeah, that's the pressure distribution along the walls here. So it's larger at the inlet, then it decreases, and then it gets recovered. Then there's yet another function. You can extract some data along line. So uh, uh, you simply prescribe the coordinates where you want to start and finish. And uh, you can also get, in this way, velocity profile. It's each time there are a few things that you can resolve. So that's the velocity profile. That's the cross-section sometime after the cylinder. So you can see that no slip on the top the largest velocity in between the cylinders, and uh, practically zero velocity in here. And there's plenty of other things, boundary integrals, and so on. So yeah, that was the laminar flow itself. And that's the idea. That's the way it will always work. So for now, uh, let's just move to two other problems. To, uh, all those problems are available as tutorials in the toolbox themselves. So even if you do not get it at the moment, later on, you will be able just to check them out. I will also give you the same scripts, if you wish, after that. Uh, OK. So as I al already told you, the second thing is the heat exchanger case. And uh, the way it looks is the following. Let's just read the mesh. Uh, can I display that? It should be somewhere here. OK, yeah, it's there. So that's the flow domain. And each of those cylinders is actually a heat source. So cold water flows in, bypasses the cylinders, and gets heated. So yeah, like. Heat exchanges are really common, like in a, a, any kind of engineering design, batteries, power plants, whatever, you, you name that. And we just want to simulate a laminar flow past these and solve for the heat transfer on, on top of that. We do not assume, like, uh, I mean, we assume that the heating is not so strong as to affect the flow properties itself. It's simply for sake of simplicity. So as you will see, uh, like first we solve the fluid mechanics problem. And only after that, we will be solving the problem that's related to the transport of heat. So it's like two-step solution. And actually, the second problem is a direct problem, because it's a linear problem. It's simply Laplace equation plus the convective part for velocity. But anyways, let's just go through that step by step. So did I convert the mesh to the second order? Uh, yes, I did. And now, again, natural thing. We define fluid properties. And yeah, viscosity also comes in lambda. That's thermal conductivity. I also add, actually, density. Heat capacity is for water. We work on thermal diffusivity, so we divide lambda by rho times uh, heat capacity. We initialize the solution, define inlet, and we iterate that. So without further delay, let's just work on that piece. OK, and yes, let's give it a little time to converge. Just four steps, it, we should, whoa, it converges really fast. OK. Uh, oh, it's, it's quite surprising that it converged that fast. I didn't remember that. 
maybe that that might be like a pretty simple case here. But anyways, that's what I got. That's the velocity flow where it enters on the left and bypasses those those heat exchangers. Also, when you look into the code, you will see that that's the thing that we could have tried out in the previous case uh, that along the walls numbers uh, along some walls we've got the slip along x so here that's the symmetry or slip and that's here and that's also here and here and uh, yeah so we've got the velocity field that's just the x velocity component but we can do other things as well with that and now in order to solve the heat equation that's simply the convection diffusion equation we do the matrix assembly of our problem. If you're not that familiar with finite element, actually you do not need to worry much because in every solver you can see you will see that the procedure is exactly the same. If you solve for heat, you use assemble diffusion matrix, then there's a step that's called assemble scalar convection matrix. So if this part wasn't present, we would simply solve for heat diffusion. But there is also flow of fluid that convects the heat. So we have to add that. And uh, we apply the boundary conditions, where we simply say that the temperature at the inlet is 20 degrees and the pipes are 30 degrees. The number of pipe, the pipes are numbered here, 26, 7, 8, 29, and 30. That also results from the geometry definition. And using MATLAB solution, uh, MATLAB division, we simply solve the problems and we get the velocity field, uh, the temperature field, sorry. And uh, that's a single step. Obviously, like uh, this MATLAB division takes care of all the iterations for the problem, but the point is that the problem itself is linear. And M MATLAB is smart enough to solve the linear problems with whatever means necessary. I mean, that's that's the thing that you pay most for in MATLAB. And uh, then, but it, basically that's a linear problem. So we do not need any kind of explicit iterative steps as the ones in Navier-Stokes. Because in Navier-Stokes, we would linearize the problem and uh, then set it up again, use the previous step from velocity. And yeah, like we can discuss that later on. But anyways, once we've got this velocity, let's just deal with the heat. and. And what? And it's finished. Yeah, it's it's done. That 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 was really simple. That's so how that's really fast. And let's have a look for that. Yeah. So uh, that's the temperature field. 50 degrees in here, 20 in here, and you've got the conduction and convection. Obviously, we can manipulate that a little bit. For example, let's assume that the thermal conductivity of the fluid. Is, is larger so let's let's do it like five times larger 2.6 and let's see if the physics physics is solved correctly okay lambda k and let's get to solving this problem once again uh, yes k shows up in here so let's 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 redo the problem again and let's make it a figure five now so ah huh? yeah let's do it like that evaluate selection okay so you can now see that uh yeah the convection obviously got strong i mean the conduction got stronger so the heat diffuses into the flow much faster ah th that's velocity that's not the proper comparison but that's the old temperature field yes so the physics is resolved okay uh just not to bore you with uh, more things, or maybe just one thing that you can still do. Uh, you can get the gradient of temperature, and you can compute the heat fluxes, and uh, get the boundary profiles, everything you wish. But that's simply standard MATLAB plotting. You can also find the forces on those, uh, on those uh, cylinders of the heat exchanger whatever you wish. It's simply playing around with MATLAB. And uh, 
that's 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 the point but it's really up to you i still want to show you the third problem so let's not spend time on that if you're more interested then we can just do it separately other time and so on okay so the third thing is the classic naka o12 airfoil flow and uh, yeah let's move to that as well for now so the story is usual import mesh gmesh we already generate the boundary layer in here because that's necessary for aerodynamic flows convert it to the second order and display the mesh to make sure that it, it's proper okay the variables had been created okay and that's that's the mesh for us in here and let's have a look at that obviously you need like a l really large domain to get the aerodynamics correctly so that's why the profile is so small compared to the overall shape of the uh, of the domain okay still again to make the simulation feasible for a laptop or in a show obviously the the airfoil is not smooth as smooth as it should be <laughs> that's 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 pretty obvious uh, but yeah that's just for sake of demonstration uh, we've got nice validation for, for for decent mesh performed later. You can just check it out on our website. But here, okay, we've created the boundary layer. Things look 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 pretty decent over here. And uh, yeah, after this is done, we just define the fluid, initialize the solution. The extra thing is the relaxation factor because we would simply relax the new solution with the previous one because the turbulence models are not that well behaved when it comes to convergence we need to use some numerical tricks we will also compute the wall distance uh, so this the distance to the nearest wall because that's necessary for this kind of solution and we would uh, copy the velocity to another array because we will use that with under relaxation we will solve the flow with five angles of a five degrees angle of attack and uh, the velocity, okay, I switched this to 3.75, so it's 3.75, Reynolds to uh, 25,000. Uh, so, yeah, that's already turbulent. And the difference for this problem is that now, actually here it's the so-called one equation turbulence model, that's called constant intensity turbulence model, and uh, it's uh, it requires turbulent viscosity to be computed so there are some extra parameters for that but anyways uh, not going into too many details of this model oh, actually I'm not that sure now it might be uh, actually now KL is one equation this is CITMM apparently it's of uh, it's zero equation model so it's even simpler again like there's gonna be K epsilon uh, in, in a month so like more complex models will also be supported that's a pretty old one and let's just play around with it again to see how this thing works so we can start here evaluate selection and the convergence process should begin in here okay we would need a little bit more RAM memory and like it will take us a little bit longer but okay meanwhile let's just skip to the menu okay okay I see Jacob helping you great thanks Jacob your help is appreciated really and uh, now that's the procedure okay yeah Kuba will tell you there is KL model and uh, K Epsilon is on the finish we struggle a little bit with it like everybody who knows the maths behind that knows it's not, not that easy and as soon as we have it uh, like K Omega will follow because it's actually more well posed than K Epsilon itself uh, transition models Mr. Rayek, Rayek sorry not, not in this regime unfortunately transition models are really sophisticated things not for a light lightweight solver so maybe in the future uh, 
if you are interested in transition models, definitely you should use like really sophisticated tools. I mean, you know, the numerics can mess up lots of stuff. So even if you have nice transition model in a poor solver, uh, in a small kind of solver with pretty small meshes, it, it won't do you any good. But yeah, like there will be k epsilon. Okay, uh, let's, uh, okay, still a little bit way to go, or, um, how, what was the convergence level? 10 to minus 6, so we're almost there. We are almost there. Uh, okay, so meanwhile, ah no, okay, okay, it's finished. Nice. So let's have a look how the thing performs in here. Polyweight selection, and yes, that's the velocity field uh, x component again, and uh, obviously the interesting things just happen nearby to the profile. As I say, it's, it, this geometry is far from perfect, so let's do not expect miracles. But uh, yeah, you can see the thin boundary layer develop. So like technically it's correct, while of course like here it's not smooth and do not count on anything proper in here. But yeah, uh, if you want to see how it performs on some benchmark data, just please visit our website, uh, the news section, there will be some uh, things on airfoil validation. And uh, yeah, just what's also done in here is the uh, pressure coefficient along the airfoil. Uh, this is no, okay, so this is the pressure coefficient actually on the airfoil, I mean, in the, in the whole field, in the entire field. Yeah, as we would expect at the stagnation point here and under pressure in here. And uh, in the problem, we also can plot the distribution of the pressure coefficient. And uh, that's that's how it looks on the wing. So that's on the bottom. Okay, we should distinguish that by colors, and that's on the top, because it's under pressure over there. And again, all the things are readily extracted, lift and drag force and coefficients, and uh, you can see how they look. Okay, drag coefficient 0.07, lift 0.4. That's more or less the way it should be. And uh, yeah, and that's 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 for the very basic standard model here. And that's pretty much it that I wanted to show you. Uh, so yeah, we've gone through three cases and. Uh, this is everything that I wanted to show you for today. So, uh, so yeah, like, uh, I wonder what your impressions are. Uh, I wonder if you have any questions. From the chat, I can see that Jacob was handling them on the run. And, uh, yeah, like, if you still want to ask us something right now, just 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 go ahead. Uh, if not now, later on. Uh, are we importing anything from other than GMesh? Uh, I mean, not. I mean, yeah. Actually, technically, I mean, importing. Yeah. Uh, one note, like, actually, MATLAB has its own mesh generator as well. You can play around with it. That's the most con not convenient thing, but but so you can generate it as well. Uh, like people keep on asking us about that, and I mean we should simply put that in our to-do list. Like the the the, the fluent mesh format, it's it's pretty standard. So uh, like uh, ex ex expect that soon. We we should just put it on the to-do list. So not at the moment, but like very very soon. It's if it's something that you definitely want to have. Just give us a month and, and we have it. Like, that's well, the top to-do list. And, 
Yeah, the most important thing is that those are unstructured meshes. So in 2D, they are triangles. In 3D, they are tetrahedrons. And the boundary layers are also composed of triangles. Um, uh, yes, OK. Any other questions? Uh, OK, meanwhile, uh, shape optimization. Uh, yes, the solver is able to adapt the mesh itself. Uh, I just show you on our website how it looks. Uh, let's let's visit that. Uh, there is even a sample that's in tutorial number 22. If you visit our website in here, uh, go to the second round you will see that there is a thing on automatic shape optimization. So we can deform the meshes themselves. And uh, mm, let me go back to you. Uh, uh, yet another issue is, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, so that's for deforming the meshes. That's easy. And uh, yeah, as Kuba says, uh, we have uh, the mesh adaptation. You can check it out. I mean, this kind of mesh adaptation is available in the uh, in the compressible solver because for now it's actually used for uh, the creation and recreation of the shocks of the of the regions of large pressure gradients. But there's no uh, no obstacle to use it for other purposes. So. Yeah, that's that's a nice feature. You 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 can just check it out in further tutorials. Maybe that's a good uh, good idea for another webinar. And uh, yeah, like uh, in a long plan, there is an option to also develop the uh, adjoint base mesh adaptation. But uh, yeah, that's a slightly longer thing. That d depends uh, on, 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 on few other aspects. We want to get the uh, things right before. Uh, longer uh, than transition models, I guess. Uh, well, uh, I don't know that if implementation of uh, uh, Mesh refinement is longer than transition model. I mean, yeah, I just have to talk to the developers. We'll see. I mean, we, that, that wasn't definite. Transition models weren't on our priori priority list, to, to be honest. I mean, uh, many people are just happy with standard turbulence models, especially because this uh, solver is used as a sort of lightweight solver that's supposed to work in MATLAB. And uh, that's uh, that's 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 the reason, and uh, that's that, that that's it. Okay. Uh, okay. So I think I do not see any other questions from your side, and I don't want other people to keep waiting. So for now, I will just thank you for participating. We'd love to learn from your feedback. We'll be conducting such webinars regularly. And yeah, feel welcome to suggest w whatever you wish. To be honest, we have basic ideas about the development. But like, if many users point to something, that, that will really help us. And we would really appreciate that. So it was nice time spending with you. Uh, Jacob, really thanks for your help. And uh, if you want to go back to something, this event is actually being recorded. So we will put it back on YouTube. Meanwhile, uh, thanks very much for attention. And yeah, have a nice day. Take care.